Hi, hello. Welcome back to Dolly Crafter. This video is slightly overdue. It was supposed to be a Christmas video, but it didn't work out that way for me. This was a collaboration with Jackie O. The concept was super fun and we were really excited about putting everything together, finally! But then I traveled for the holidays and I was confronted by something I think we've all been trying to avoid since 2020. Now I tried my best to not be in this situation for two years, but, 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 it got me! Ugh. Thankfully, me and my family are okay, and overall the experience could have been a lot worse like many other people I know. Jackie was very understanding and supportive, so thank you so much, Jackie. Now, goodbye Christmas video and hello winter video. See what I did there? Spilled milk? Not here. Now, on to crafting! Remember in Chibi Yusu's video when I said, should I make like a whole army? I want to make a whole army. Ooh. Well, here I am hoarder style. Now, can you blame me? Look how cute these dolls end up looking. Oh, this hair adorables with boxy chicks. I, I love them so much. And I thought they'd be perfect for two little winter elves. Surprisingly though, this doll without a face is... <gasps> So let's, you know, hurry up and get some cute elf ears on you with some epoxy. It's party time, it's sculpting time, it's epoxy time, it's party time. Using equal parts of epoxy sculpt, I start building out the shapes for the cute little elf ears. Epoxy usually sticks pretty well to plastic, but for this particular doll, I don't know why, I had a hard time and had to like really squish it down, like really, really hard. Once the clay was squished, I tried using a sculpting tool to blend the seam between clay and doll just a little bit better. Unfortunately, my filming sucks and most of the footage was out of frame. I'm sorry about that. But look how cute they are! Yeah! So we're gonna set them aside to dry. Time for sanding! Now that the epoxy has fully cured, we can focus on sanding them down to buff out any uneven surfaces or, you know, clunky parts. As you can see here, there's quite a few. But these ears are like, you know, little tiny little baby ears. So I take the sandpaper, cut it into small strips so that I can floss it out. Yay, yippee! Sure. So here we go, flossing and sanding and flossing and sanding and getting the nooks and crannies. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's painting time. Yeah. I'm gonna go with a neutral beige to sort of match the skin tone of the body with the head and to obviously cover up those gray elf ears. Now I don't have an airbrush. This would be a lot easier if I did. Way easier. But I don't, so this is what I do. I patiently paint many layers of acrylic, making sure that each layer is thin so that it dries well and just add another one and another one and another one. And you know, eventually we get something that looks semi good. And good is good enough. But I do want to airbrush at some point because hand painting is a real pain in my... <gasps> What? I was gonna say wrist. I have carpal tunnel. Relax. Let's move on to clothes. Guess who's been practicing? Yep, that's right. Me. Now, I'm still very far from perfect, but for this project, I wanted to make my own patterns. So using a spare Boxy Girls doll, I taped her up, drew on the garments I wanted to make for her, cut them out, and... Bada bing, bada boom, you see, it's patterns. I know, I know, I have a long journey ahead of me with this sewing thing, but you know, with practice comes better. Things are starting to make sense a little bit more. You know, they're not as challenging as they once were. Before it was like learning a dead language, now it's like a gigantic puzzle. I overall, you know, I'm, I'm happy with this. You know, they're super, super high-waisted, but you know, it's a start. And because I never really have a plan with my dolls, like I don't sketch it out, I don't come up with like a true concept, these dolls, they spoke to me. They are like, you know what, we want pink jumpsuits and we want to look cozy and we want, you know, like a cowl neck sweater. And I was like, sure, here's some pink pants and a cowl neck. <laughs> 
No, seriously, I cannot wait to see these on the elves. Time for a face. As usual, I'm going to begin this process by lightly dusting on my variety of pastels. I use different size brushes to get into different areas of the face for contouring and shadowing. I'm not really going for too much detail at this point. I'm just trying to get the skin to look more realistic and like fleshy toned. I would say I use about two to three coats of Mr. Super Clear during this process so that I can gradually build up the opacity in those fleshy tones. Because her skin is so fair, or well, both of their skin is so fair, it's barely noticeable, but trust me, it helps. Now, because we hand painted this, it wasn't the most... Mm, ew! Yeah, it wasn't the most even surface to draw on for straight lines, but you know, it's what we got and that's what we're dealing with, so moving on. These dolls call for like really large eyes, very similar to their original design. I'm going for an ombre effect though, so I'm again going back from my pastels layer by layer and adding the color to build up the saturation. I love the pastel stage so much. You're just, you know, you don't even care about detail. You're just brushing on and dusting. I'm a little messy at this point with the pastels, but you know, it's nothing a kneaded eraser can't fix. The best part about getting messy with the pastels is going back with a kneaded eraser and cleaning it up. It's kind of like those Swiffer commercials, you know, the ones where you can see the difference between dirty and clean. <laughs> so now I'm going to paint on the whites of the eye using a very, very janky brush. If anyone knows where I can get good ones, please let me know because this <laughs> it's just not okay. After I'm done painting on the whites of the eyes and the acrylic has completely dried, I spray the doll with a layer of Mr. Super Clear and then start adding detail. I'm using watercolor pencils, which I believe is like the hobby standard for drawing on faces. I know some people use acrylic paint and that's fine, but you know, as we established earlier, I do not like hand painting faces. For the pupils, I actually stumbled upon this by accident, but I thought she looked really cute with just the outline, so I stuck with that for both dolls. After much blushing and layers of Mr. Super Clear, these face-ups are finally done. I ended up adding some shadowing using pastels off camera because this took forever, but I'm in love with their faces. I think both elves just look so freaking cute. Okay, time for hair. I'm gonna be using wefts on these dolls. Originally, they were supposed to be Christmas dolls, so one of them was gonna have red and white and the other one was gonna have blue but it's not Christmas anymore, so it's just gonna be one white and one blue for this project. This little elf is going to have a pixie cut with shaved sides, and this one is going to receive a half up and half down hairstyle. Oh, I'm so happy! Before I start applying the rows of wefts on the elf that's receiving the pixie cut, I give it a little brush to make sure all the fibers are laying flat. I get my epoxy glue, and apply a small amount per section that I'll be working on. Epoxy glue is extremely tacky and when you're working with yarn, it can get really frustrating and messy. I also want to start swooping the hair while it's drying so that the fibers lay down in the direction that I want them to. As you can see here, it's already developing like a layered effect, which is exactly what I'm going for for this doll. I love it so far. I forgot to paint the scalp, which is pretty tragic, but not unfixable. So let's just use some magic. Magic in the making. Yes. Now let's work on this cutie while her companion is off on the side drying. I'm going to be basically doing the same thing with epoxy and the wefts, except a different hairstyle. Like her companion, I go row by row, except this time she's going to have bangs, so every time I place down a weft and it's dry, I go ahead and I cut the layer. I find if you do it layer by layer like this, you get a more even result. But in my case, my carpal tunnel makes it very hard to get a straight line. Oh no! But if you just press down the weft, you make the fibers sort of splay out and you can just 
go in and fine tune it by cutting little by little until you're satisfied. Now, for it to not stand up straight like that, we're going to heat up a metal straw and use it like a curling iron. It's very hard because it's just so small and I don't want to burn her face, so this takes a lot of finesse and patience. A lot of curling and a lot of pressing. I think in total this took me about 20 minutes or something ridiculous like that, so you can only imagine how much time it took to do the entire hairstyle. But after repeating this process over and over again like everything I do, this is how she looks. Incredible! Now here is where the two hairstyles differ. I'll be following along a tutorial that was put out by Mozekito a little while ago on how to make buns using wefts. I'll put the link for that below. I did my best trying to follow along, but I honestly had some difficulty. Oh no! These buns refuse to stick to the head. It's most likely user error and has nothing to do with the tutorial, but I had to really press hard on these things for them to stay. Once I got them to stay, I just sectioned them off, but the one on the left side, let's just say way less than perfect. After some finesse and fine tuning off camera, I finally got the space buns to look exactly how I wanted them to look. Now it's your turn. They're looking so cute already. To make the flocking, I have to cut fibers of yarn little by little and this took a really long time so I don't want to put you to sleep so I'm gonna do you a favor and I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward. This is an exhausting thing to do by the way. If you know of like a simpler way for me to do this without killing my hands, again please let me know. Ah yes, all done. Now I'm not gonna go through the tedious application of this flocking, so here's a little bit of her before and after. Wow. Don't we love this little editing magic? Hey! So fluffy. Definitely looks like a winter hairstyle. Now let's put you to the side for now so you can dry. And time to curl this cutie's hair. I'm gonna be using the same metal straw that I used before and just go all the way around the head. I'm gonna speed this process up because again, it took forever and I don't think you wanna sit here for an hour watching me curl yarn. Unless you do, but I doubt it. I really, really doubt it. There, she has half of her hair done now. Now for the other side, I have to curl in the opposite direction. I believe the rule of thumb is that the curls need to curl away from the face. And voila! All curls have been curled. They're so bouncy, shiny, and adorable. I wish my hair could look like this, dang! Anyway, to give it a more natural look, I'm going to take a comb and just gently brush through the curls, being careful not to completely destroy them. While I was combing out these curls, I noticed a little something. Oh, she has a freaking hole in her head, like a gap. <laughs> what is that? Oh my goodness. We're just going to ignore that. We're going to turn you around and you'll be front facing always. <laughs> All right, you can go now. Goodbye. Now it's time for a haircut. I cut the band to release the hair and get started. Because she's getting a layered look, I cut on an angle, brush out the fibers so that I can see where I need to even it out. I do the same thing that I did to the other doll's bangs. Make it even and then curl. Since this doll has less hair, it is far less time consuming and enjoyable. There we go. Super curly. Now using hairspray on my fingertips, I do some fine tuning and finessing to the hairstyle, making sure that each curl lays exactly where I want it to. After that's done, her hair is complete. Look how cute. Oh, she looks so sassy. Ooh, they're so cute. Look at them. Oh my gosh. Oh, I want my hair to look like both of these. Even though that's impossible. But anyway. Oh, look at her. Ooh, so cute. Here they are in different lighting. 
I can't believe how cute this hairstyle looks on this doll. I know I'm saying cute like a thousand times, but come on, they're so cute, aren't they? They're so cute, 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 cute. Okay, I'm done. Enough with the word cute. All right, little elves, are you ready to get dressed? Okay, come on, let's go get ready. Everyone, meet Anne and Evie, my two adorable winter elves. These dolls truly took on a life of their own from the very beginning. I can see it now. Anne likes to spend her time decorating their home and reading by the fire, while Evie spends all of her time coming up with new ideas and inventions to make life on the mountain more enjoyable. They really strike me as two creative souls living happily together in their winter wonderland. Well, I truly have my hands full now. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. And I'm gonna need your help saying goodbye. You too, Evie. Okay, ready? Oh, you, oh, you wanna do it by yourself? Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Aw, look at that, wait a minute. You're cutting me out of frame. Hey, this is still my show, you know. Hello? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is it with these dolls? They're just so mischievous. Anyway, bye. See you next time. Little elves trying to take over my show. Who do they think they are?